Hey, everybody. My name is Joe Brunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm that covers disruptive tech for a global audience of retail and institutional investors. So today, we're going to tell some rather fun stories about um, a company called United Therapeutics and a technology known as xenotransplantation. So to start the story off, we want to understand the problem. This information is rather dated, but relatively the ratios are probably still accurate. So there are a lot of people that are waiting for organs and those who are probably most affected would be um, people that need kidney transplant. So this problem doesn't really strike home unless you know somebody that's affected by it or you're affected by it yourself. So we were recently in the Marshall Islands going to a place called Kwajalein. It's a military base that rents an island from the country of um, Marshall Islands. They're largely known for harvesting a lot of tuna. And we went there to research um, space radar they were building on Kwajalein that can detect uh, objects in space the size of marbles. Well, during the layover there, I stayed on a number of occasions with the CTO of um, a large bank in, in that region. And his son was living in Hawaii because his kidneys were failing and they didn't have adequate equipment in Marshall Islands. Fortunately, this gentleman had enough resources that he could afford to have a small apartment in Hawaii. And you know, he was telling me that his son was really depressed, couldn't hang out with his friends, had to stay in his apartment in Hawaii and get dialysis treatment all the time. And um, his son was getting really depressed and, and he was uh, worried about what might happen. It was a really sad story. So uh, when I got back, we researched quite heavily kidney transplants and things like that. And people who need a kidney transplant are really in, in a lot of hurt. So unless they can get that kidney transplant, they need to use a dialysis machine and they need to be close to that dialysis machine. There are no portable ones, right? They're working on that. They're working on all these different things, but it all comes down to people not being able to get organs when they need. Now, the, there, there's a lot of questions about, about legalities and things like that. So for example, there's one country on this planet where you can go buy a kidney that's in Iran and it'll cost you about $4,600 and you can get yourself a kidney. Well, that's illegal. So the organ trade is illegal. Aside from the black market, it's illegal everywhere else. Now, what you are allowed to do is to barter for organs. So you may have a family member that has an organ that somebody else's family member needs, and then you can do swaps and things like that. So it's a very difficult problem to solve. So 10 people die every day because they're not able to get the organs that they need from a transplant. So it's a it's a big problem and where else would we turn to solve problems than one of the most exciting technologies there is which is synthetic biology now biology itself is the most advanced manu manufacturing tech we have on the planet right so think about you know planting a seed and having that turn into food in a single season that's remarkable right you use sunlight and a bit of oxygen and all these minerals and all of a sudden you have food in front of you well that's that's very slick, right? That we don't have manufacturing capabilities that can do things like that. So if we're looking at how to solve the organ problem, there's a number of ways that we might do that. We could look at using 3D printing or we could look at growing organs and growing organs using animals is called xenotransplantation. So what animals would we use to grow organs? Well, as it turns out, pigs are right on track. So in terms of all the requirements, they're easily bred and they have large litters and they grow quite fast. And their the makeup of their organs is around the same size as humans. So pigs have always been uh, a preferred species when we look at xenotransplantation. So this uh, chart is rather rather good chart that shows the, the various applications that we might be able to derive from a pig. So the pig's cornea, you can see this has the statuses. So those were approved for marketing in China back in 2017. And then there's lungs and kidneys and heart, liver, pancreas, all these things that, all these components of a pig that can be ten, uh, potentially used for human treatment. So even the, you know, and it sounds far-fetched, but even the FDA talks about that, right? They say pigs can potentially 
there's all kinds of uses that that we can derive from pigs. Now, people have a lot of questions about that, and these are just some that had popped up on Google, and they're quite good ones. So, we've talked about why pigs are the preferred animal, but the question, can a human survive with a pig heart? That was just answered very recently. Um, just weeks ago, a gentleman received a pig heart for the first time, and he, he doesn't appear to have died yet, so he's been alive for several weeks. And the company we're going to talk about today issued a press release a couple days ago highlighting this remarkable achievement. So this gentleman had a pig heart transplanted, and he has to take a particular drug that comes with that so that his immune system doesn't reject it. But so far, so good. Now, there's a lot of, uh, let's say, contra controversy, as the Brits would say, around xenotransplantation. And the points of contention mainly are that we don't know what sort of retroviruses could this could possibly create as a result of, you know, a, a mixing organs between species. And we don't know how to allocate organs to, you know, who should get them first. And then PET is complaining, of course, because even though the average American eats 51 pounds of pork a year, we need to make sure that the pork that we're using to save lives is treated fairly, never mind all the pigs that are cold for, for human um, consumption. So there's a, there's a lot of things that need to be ironed out. And I'm sure the people on the organ waiting list are probably uh, less worried about some of these problems, but um, they, they still need to be considered because some could be a showstopper to the investment thesis, all right? Um, so there have been successful xenotransplantations, not just in the one we talked about, the heart, but there's also been some progress being made with kidneys as well. And the company that's behind all this, um, United Therapeutics, um, they've been working on this problem for a very long time. So if you had to look at the company with the most pedigree when it comes to xenotransplantation, you would look towards United Therapeutics. Now, this is quite a remarkable firm for a lot of reasons, all right? So the first time you go to their website and you check out their the way they've designed, it's really, it's um, it's very unique. And right away, you know that you're, you're you're looking at a very unique company and the things they say and, and the way that they choose to portray themselves. They're also a public benefit corporation. Now we don't, we, we view these with a certain degree of suspicion because we invest to show a return on capital. And then when you give us that return on capital, we'll decide what charities and causes we wanna to donate to. We do not want corporations deciding that for us, nor do we want their resources dedicated to anything but executing on their mission statement. So public benefit corporations, we've talked about them before, you know, the likes of Ben and Jerry's and Patagonia, extremely political firms. That's another problem that, that arises. But in respect to United Therapeutics, you just get the feeling that they're probably, they probably have um, the, 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 your best interests in mind. And, and I'll tell you why. So this individual is a remarkable person. And it's funny how people who accomplish a great deal of things, some remarkable people, just they never grace the cover of magazines. And she, this woman is the founder and CEO of United Therapeutics. And she started out um, after college. She did a couple years of traveling and she came across um, a NASA installation in the Seychelles and it sparked her curiosity. So she came back and she studied satellite communications and did her thesis on satellites. Then she did her four-year JD MBA program, became a lawyer. She launched several satellite communications companies, including Sirius. Now, this is remarkable. It, during that time, she's a successful telecom executive. Her daughter has a really bad illness. And she looks around and there's nobody that has a drug that can help her daughter. So she founds a biotech firm. She studies her PhD and does a thesis in xenotransplantation. And she builds a drug, develops a drug that can help her daughter. This is that drug. So you can see here in, um, in this Forbes piece in 2002, so that was 20 years ago, they said, they talked about this story about how she had you know, founded a company just because her daughter had a need. And they said any day now she expects the drug that they had developed called Remodulin to, um, to be approved. Well, here's 
the latest quarterly results from United Therapeutics. So they're clearing, what, nearly $2 billion a year, at least annualized. And this drug that was developed cleared $125 million in revenues last quarter. So, you know, there's 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 a um, an old saying that says, you know, you should live your life the way you want to, not the way other people want you to live it. This woman lives her life the way that she wants to. And it's it's absolutely remarkable story. And and there has to be some um, you have to assign some credibility to people that can accomplish things like that. Now, today, United Therapeutics is all about drugs that you just saw on that slide. That's where their that's where their cash cows are. But they have some pretty big aspirations about where they want to go with xenotransplantation. So they've developed these um, organs and components that they plan to uh, plan to make available for commercial use. They have a pig that they developed, which was approved by the FDA. It has 10 gene edits. So they're using gene editing to accomplish this stuff. And that same, that was the pig they used for this uh, pig heart transplant. So they had this uh, particular pig approved by the FDA, not specifically for xenotransplantation, but it was approved for consumption and for um, therapeutic research. So they have a pig candidate, and now they're growing organs, and they're doing research, and they're making progress. And that what you need to remember, I think, there is that that's still a long way off. So even though they've made some progress, and there are some some good stories coming out that it's still a long way off. Now, what we're particularly, uh, let's say, intrigued by, you know, this woman who goes out there and does what she wants has, when she has a vision, you probably want to pay attention to what that is, because based on her track record of execution, she's probably going to do what she says that she's going to do. And this is the vision that they have. So aside from the xenotransplantation component, she also wants to develop a solar powered organ farm that delivers organs using drones. So she has partnered with three, what they call vertical, vertical takeoff and landing, electric VTOL equipment. You may be familiar with these names, at least Ehang, you, you, you'd probably be familiar with. So VTOL is also an emerging technology and essentially it's, one could describe it as an electric helicopter. You know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of um, nomenclature problems there, but the idea is that let's think about large drones that can transport organs when they're needed, all right? And then it's all solar powered, so it's clean energy and all this stuff. So that's her vision. And they recently just had the first drone delivery of an organ. Now, I don't know how much of a gimmick that was versus you know, it's quite easy to deliver something via drone one time and say that, you know, that, that you proved the concept, but um, they certainly did that. And she's no slouch. So apparently she's also been able to, I think, uh, set the world record for the longest flight in, a, in an electric VTOL. So really hands on with the companies that are, that are building the equipment and really thinking that through. So we'll probably come back at some point and revisit that because we're quite curious about um, the way that she's vetting the, the VTOL equipment. So the other thing that you need to consider here when you're looking at United Therapeutics as, an, you know, as a potential play on xenotransplantation, aside from the fact that they're not realizing any revenues, there's also some pretty um, hardcore competitors. So one's called eGenesis. If you're familiar with a gentleman named George Church, he's kind of one of the most prominent scientists around or nobody knows his name because we don't we choose to glorify movie stars instead of scientists and people that accomplish things but um he has a, a remarkable track record of founding some amazing companies and he's founded this company that also is working on some of the similar problems that that united therapeutics is so it's certainly not they're not the only one though you would Probably, be, be, it would probably be fair to say that United Therapeutics is the leader at this point in what they've been able to accomplish. So, the last part of this story, I wanted to touch on a company called Synthetic Genomics. Now, when we first came across this firm, we thought this was one of the most exciting SynBio startups there was. It's founded by a man named Craig Venter. He created Synthetic Life, so he created this uh, cellular organism, and he gave it its own email address, and he encoded all this information in its DNA, and it's just quite 
just gonna nerd out on that for, for hours. It's just remarkable what he did. He created synthetic life. So when you do things like that, and you have accomplishments like that, then um, you know you, you kind of you kind of set a precedent that what you're going to what you're going to do next is going to be quite remarkable. So um, he had founded syn synthetic genomics, and then the the firm kind of kind of disappeared off the radar for a little bit. So we were wondering, you know, what's going on with it? And we had written a piece that showed um, synthetic uh, uh, genomics had partnered with uh, United Therapeutics and that um, they were they had funded so United Therapeutics had funded um, about a hundred million dollars in revenues for synthetic genomics and uh, they, they then all of a sudden it, it seemed to disappear so we were wondering well well whatever happened to um, the work that that the two firms were doing together well there's a number of things that came out of this so first of all when United Therapeutics issued their press release just days ago talking about the success that they had with you know, the recent successes around xenotransplantation. One of the things that they mentioned that we found quite interesting was they gave thanks to three different people in, in, in the press release. Well, one of those people happened to be Craig Venter, and then it says, well, you know, Craig Venter used to be part of uh, synthetic genomics, and now he's part of this particular group at United Therapeutics. Well, that's awful interesting, right? So that means that perhaps that equity position that United Therapeutics held is now translated into, you know, an aqua hire, perhaps. So that was one component of synthetic um, genomics that that's accounted for. The other was a desktop DNA factory. So the company's name is uh, is Codex, and we we the intern that built this slide, you can see clearly didn't fill out the, the, the names here. But the new DNA printing machine, there's a firm now that's publicly traded called Codex. And they're a $200 million firm. They don't have meaningful revenues yet, but they're selling this desktop DNA factory, printing machine, whatnot. Similar to the work that DNA Script is doing. That's something we talked about in our recent piece on um, Twist Biosciences. I don't know if that's been published yet, but it's worth a look. And then the third thing that they did is that they renamed themselves to Virid, Vir, Viridos, V-I-R-D-O-S. And now they're working with ExxonMobil to create biofuels. And, you know, the start of that was back quite a long time ago, 15 years ago, when ExxonMobil said they were committing $600 million to biofuels. And then a couple of years passed, they said, well, we need to go back to the drawing board because it's not really ready for commercial use, blah, blah, blah. 2017, they uh, renewed. And then now you have them saying, well, we're going to be renewing efforts with ExxonMobil. We renamed ourselves and this is what we're going to be doing. So the end result of synthetic uh, genomics is now we believe reached a conclusion. And that's these three parts. You have some of the, the work they're doing is at United Therapeutics. Some is now in this DNA printing machine that had an IPO and the company's publicly traded. And his other bit is the rename pivot. Well, it's not a pivot. They've been doing that for a long time now is quote unquote renewing their efforts with ExxonMobil. So that's, a, uh, that's worth noting because a lot of people were paying attention and we had readers asking us about what had ever happened with synthetic genomics. And that appears to what, uh, what's been happened. So, the last thing we'll mention, fair disclosure. So back when we were originally researching United Therapeutics, we were really excited about the story and, and extremely impressed with the founder's uh, track record and, and accomplishments and wanted to support that. So we held a position. And then over time, we revised our tech stock portfolio, put together our investing methodology, and that stock no longer exists in our portfolio. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, these biotech firms, and you can look at the price chart and see the volatility for yourself. They're very risky and subject to regulatory whims. So we don't like the unexpected, the things you can't control because that increases risk. Those externalities result in higher volatility. So this is a very risky stock by itself. Second, they haven't realized any revenues and they're probably a ways from that. It's hard to say, could be half a decade, could be a decade, could be a couple of years. You just don't know, but until until they break out a revenue segment that specifically mentions xenotransplantation. So that means they have traction, they have product market fit. 
it's not something that that we look at uh, to invest in. But, so we love the story. We absolutely are just blown away by the acumen and track record and accomplishments of the founder and this this firm um, should be a, a MBA business case study. It's just remarkable. But we're going to avoid investing in a company um, based on the Xeno transplantation thesis until revenues appear. And there's also a conversation you can have around how large the total addressable market might be. You say, well, how much is a kidney? Multiply that by the wait list. Then, you know, 3,000 people a month come on board needing a kidney every month. So then you can start running the numbers on that. And we did some back the napkin math and it's a pretty decent business. But again, very difficult to try to get market estimates for that because all the research firms are just so far off that it's just meaningless. So. Um, certainly something to watch. Go ahead and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the video, all that stuff, and we'll be continuing to put out um, videos on similar topics and um, especially things that relate to gene editing and exciting stuff that's happening in the world of SynBio. So thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated.